If you want to print fast or want to use high flow hotends, you'll need a strong extruder. There are so many different models on the market and I tested almost a dozen to find out which is the strongest. Let's find out more and let me tease you a little about what I plan to do with the one that can push the most powerful. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Easily create the website you've always wanted or replace your old one that you've always hated. Save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. Even though extruders for 3D printers only need to push the filament into the hot end, they come in many different forms and shapes. Everyone knows the most basic feeder from the ender printers with a single gear directly on the stepper shaft. But there are a ton of more advanced extruders with dual gears next to each other, dual gears in parallel, small extruder gears, large extruder gears and even one that pushes filament forward with a belt. All of that's driven with large stepper motors, small steppers, planetary gearboxes or even warm drives. I gathered a bunch of them over the years and tested all of them for their pushing force and extrusion consistency. Why? Well, for ages I had a project on my mind which is small scale injection molding using a 3D printer. If you are intrigued by this idea, then don't forget to subscribe to not miss that project. Anyways, for injection molding, it's very important to push the molten material with a lot of pressure into the mold so that it's able to reach even the smallest cavity. Yet crazy projects like injection molding using a 3D printer are not the only reason why strong extruders are important. 3D printer kinematics have been becoming faster and faster the last couple of years. And if you want to print quickly, you need to push a lot of material with a consistently high force into the nozzle. On the other hand, the extruder, which is often the heaviest part of the hot end, reduces the maximum allowable accelerations, so it also needs to be lightweight. The test setup is quite simple and is partly inspired what Adam from Vector3D and Thomas Sanladro did in the past. I mounted the extruder onto a frame and guide the filament into a freestanding hot end assembly that has a load cell at the bottom. Since the hotend and extruder are not directly connected, the force that's generated when the filament is pushed through the hotend will be reacted through the scale that I sample 10 times a second using an Arduino board. My first idea was to do all of these tests on my highly modified Endo 3 rig with a tool plate change system from Wambam, but the extrusion forces were so high that they just deformed everything and led me to quickly design this wooden rig that I routed out on my Mechanica Evo CNC router. The Mosquito Magnum hotend that I used acts as a variable load. Depending on the hotend temperature that I set, the viscosity of the molten material will be different. So at lower temperatures, it will take more force to push the filament through the nozzle than at higher ones. This way, I can test the maximum pushing force of an extruder at different speeds, because stepper motors have RPM-dependent torque. So let's start with the simplest one, the extruder from my old Endo 3. It uses a simple brass gear and an idler on the other side and there is no adjustment for the tension. Since it doesn't use any gearing, it needs a beefy NEMA 17 stepper motor that I ran at 1 MP current as per the datasheet. The extruder parts themselves are very light with only 31 grams, but if you want to compare it to the other ones later and add a stepper motor, a hot end and two fans, we end up with a system weight of 386 grams. I first started at 5 cubic millimeters a second extrusion rate. First the extrusion force jumps up and stays constant for a bit, while the already molten material gets pushed out of the nozzle and then starts to rise again once new cool material is fed into the hot end, which will not be as thoroughly molten as the material that already sat in there for a while. Then I turn the heater off, which results in a rise in extrusion force until, in this case, the gear started grinding the filament and we reach the maximum extrusion force. I always ran the test twice and the average maximum extrusion force for the Ender 3 one was 2.8 kilograms. At 20 cubic millimeters a second, which I could only achieve by increasing the nozzle temperature to 250 degrees Celsius, the maximum force of the peak was with 2.8 kilograms basically the same, only the drop off was a bit different. 
Next, I tested Bontex BMG Extruder, the OG dual gear extruder, which is probably the most copied design on AliExpress. And if it wasn't the whole extruder, then you'll find BMG gears almost everywhere nowadays. The dual extrusion gears are connected by a set of spur gears and push the filament from both sides for more force onto the filament. The body is SLA printed PA12, weighs 91 grams and sells for 96 euros. If you add a stepper motor, that's 3 to 1 reduced and a hot end, the whole system weighs 446 grams. With double gears, the BMG was able to push 6 kilograms at 5 cubic millimeters a second until the gears started grinding the filament and a little lower 5.5 kilograms at 20 cubic millimeters a second extrusion speed. By the way, this is a more scientific approach on such a test, but proper printing did an extruder tug of war last year, which you should also definitely watch after this. The next extruder on my test was E3D's Himera extruder, which I've been using with great success over the last years. The Himera is very compact because the extruder housing also acts as a heatsink, so you can directly screw in the old V6 components from the bottom, use it with E3D's new Revo system, or even use it in a Bowden configuration. The Himera has dual drive gears similar to the BMG, but applies a different diameter and tooth profile. The tension can be adjusted via knob, but there's nothing to turn the gears in order to feed filament by hand. Yet if you pull the tensioning lever all the way back, you can barely disengage it from the filament and push the material by hand. The standard Himera comes with a beefy stepper motor and weighs, including a hot end, 380 grams and the whole system will set you back 190 euros. Yet this includes a full Revo hot end, which is worth around 90 euros. The data sheet claims up to 12 kilograms of pushing force, so let's see how it really did. The extrusion force was nice and constant and rose up all the way to 10.2 kilograms at normal extrusion speeds, which is quite remarkable. At 20 cubic millimeters a second, it wasn't as good, but still reached 7 kilograms. Both times the filament stripped, so the motor itself is plenty strong. And this is also why I was super stoked when I saw that E3D released the XS version of the Himera last year with a smaller pancake stepper that strips almost 30% or 100 grams of weight from the extruder. It still costs 190 euros including the Revo hot end and I do have the feeling that it will replace the regular Himera because it's the only one still listed on E3D's website. Let's see if it performs the same. At regular speeds the XS was a little weaker and was able to push 8.5 kg strong. At higher speeds this dropped to 6.5 kg. The interesting thing here is that the filament didn't strip but the motor skipped which is a behavior you want on an extruder because this increases the chance that the print can recover once the filament can flow again. This is nicely visualized if we compare the force curves between the Himera that strips the filament and can barely push anything anymore at some point whereas the XS remains a quite high pushing force. In summary, if maximum force is not what you're looking for, I think the XS is in every regard better than its thicker brother and a great extruder. So let's come from the beefy boys to the super lightweight extruders and start with the Orbital 2.0 manufactured by LDO. The most obvious difference is that it uses an even smaller stepper motor, which has been becoming very popular even on other designs. The housing of the Orbital is injection molded glass fiber reinforced nylon, which makes it very stiff and feels super nice. It uses a planetary gearbox with 7.5 to 1 reduction to drive the dual Bontech extrusion gears. The 690 steps per millimeters allow very precise dosing of the filament, yet will require the motor to spin faster. Due to the popularity of the Orbital, there is a huge ecosystem around it, with a ton of mounts for different printers and hotends. The extruder costs 69 euros locally and weighs in at 152 grams, yet requires a hotend with a heatsink, which brings the system weight to 212 grams. But let's see how much this small form factor extruder can push. The Orbital had very consistent extrusion force and was able to push 7.2 kilograms at normal speeds and 6.8 kilograms at 20 cubic millimeters a second. Both times the extruder skipped showing how well the system is tuned. Just on a side note here, if you are a tech geek and interested in extruder design, I highly recommend reading the story of the Orbital 2, which details every design decision they made and is just pure gold. 
Let's now take a look at a very similar, yet also very different extruder. This is the Mellow Cannon extruder, which at first glance could be mistaken for an orbiter, but has two very unique design features. First, it uses very big extruder gears, similar to what I think Bontec came up with in their LGX extruder. This increases the contact area of filament and gear and should result in less strip and higher extrusion forces. Secondly, it is the only extruder that I've seen so far that uses a warm gearbox. Warm gears have the advantage that you can achieve very high gear reductions in a small space, here 19.5 to 1, but due to the friction in the warm gears is very inefficient, so we'll convert a lot of the motor torque into heat instead of pushing force. And it comes with another inconvenience, and this is that you cannot backdrive it, which means that you can't feed filament by hand at all. You can unscrew the tension arm, but that's inconvenient, and I would love to see a latch feature as you can for example find on the Clockwork 2 extruder. Mello sent me the first version of the Canon extruder, which partly wasn't assembled correctly and also was too tight in some places, where I had to send down some details, yet there is now an updated version that hopefully improves on some details. The Mellow Cannon is slightly cheaper and slightly lighter than the Orbiter at 65 euros and 204 grams, but let's see how the performance compares. The maximum extrusion force I was able to achieve was 5 kg at normal speed and only 4 kg at the higher speeds. Both times the motor skipped steps, which shows the inefficiency of the warm drive if you compare it to the orbital. I do like the idea behind Mellow's Canon extruder, but I think it still needs some tweaking until it can really compete with the orbital. Now it's time to test the OG large gear extruder. Bontex LGX. I really enjoy seeing Bontech doing this kind of innovation. They made dual gears popular and now try to go from the smaller gears to the larger ones for extra filament contact. And they also make something else different than the rest and this is that the second extruder gear is not pushed onto the filament by a string but fixed in a predetermined location with the adjustment lever which basically mangles the filament through the gears just like a sheet of dough through a noodle machine. I'm not sure if this approach is better or worse than a spring-loaded system, but I'd like to hear your opinion here. The only thing I was able to see is maybe a bit more fluctuation on the extrusion forces, but only slightly. The LGX is a quite compact extruder with an SLS printed housing costing 119 euros, weighing 220 grams with a pancake stepper and 280 grams as a system with a hot end. Performance was okay with 5.4 kg of extrusion force at low speeds and 5.1 kg at 20 cubic millimeters a second. It was definitely held back by the pancake stepper motor because both times the extruder motor skipped steps. For a test I increased the motor current from the recommended 650 milliamps to 1 amp, which made it reach 8.3 kg and it was still not stripping filament. So if you don't require maximum feeding force, the LGX seems to be a reliable solution, but it won't make it on the maximum extrusion force throne. Let's now get to some more exotic extruders and start with the Omnia Drop 2.1 by Drop Effect, which is designed to extrude even the most flexible filaments, for which I used it very successfully in the past. The Omnia Drop uses a pancake stepper, which connects to a 5 to 1 planetary gearbox and feeds into a dual drive extrusion system. The body of the extruder is FDM printed and can therefore be adapted to a range of different mounts. It has a very short filament path and is cooled by a really interesting heatsink design. Design. The Omnia Drop 2.1 cost 149 euros, yet with the new version 3 only sells for 125 euros. The complete system weighs 330 grams. At medium tension it achieved 6.9 kilograms of pushing force at 5 cubic milliliters a second and 6.2 kilograms at the faster speed. Both times the filament strip. As a test, I increased the tension to its limit, which makes the teeth of the gear bite deeper into the filament and made me reach even more than 9 kg of pushing force until the extruder motor skipped. Yet this felt very unhealthy for the tensioning lever and the 3D printed housing. Next, I put the DICE Pro extruder on the bench, another compact yet full metal extruder. I almost didn't add it to the test because I thought it wouldn't be any different to the other dual drive extruders. But when I took a closer look at the actual extruder gears, I got excited. They don't use the usual hopped gears for extrusion, but have actual spikes on the gears that get pushed into the filament. 
The rest of the exterior looks very solid with a really nice latching spring lever, yet no tension adjustment. This metal construction weighs in at 295 grams just for the exuder and 358 grams with the compatible hot end. Just the exuder costs a whopping 229 euros plus the additional 149 for the high temp hot end. But how does it perform? At the recommended 0.9 amp peak motor current, it pushed 9.2 kilograms at 5 cubic millimeters a second and 6.2 kilograms at 20 cubic millimeters a second. Both times the motor was the limiting part. Overamping it to 1.3 amps made it even outperform the Himera extruder with 13 kilograms pushing force until the motor again first skipped. So there's still potential left. Another very exotic extruder that feeds filament like no other is the Proper Extruder, designed by YouTube colleague Jon from Proper Printing. This model uses belts to push the filament forward, which dramatically increases the surface area of feeder to filament contact. This not only doesn't damage the material, but also allows the printing of very flexible filaments. The whole body is SLA printed from resin, giving it this unique transparent look. As cool as it looks, this extruder is heavy, weighing in at 401 grams and a whopping 526 grams if you include a hot end and cooling solution. Unfortunately, you can't buy this extruder pre-built, but if you are interested in the design, you can purchase the files for only 3 euros from Jon's website. When running the motor at 1.2 amps, I was able to push 6.2 kilograms at low speeds and 5.7 kilograms at high speeds until the stepper first skipped. Tuning it to 1.8 amps increased the performance to 9.4 kilograms when the motor still was the bottleneck. I didn't dare to go any higher because I didn't want to break anything, but the belt driven extruder principle seems to have quite some potential. Let's now come to our final contested, the OMG V2 extruder, for which I had really high hopes. Instead of having two active gears on opposing sides of the filament, the OMG uses extruder gears in series. It is meant as a direct replacement for all the simple Ender and Creality CR extruders out there and provides more reliable extrusion performance. The OMG is a full metal construction with a gear ratio of 3 to 1. Both extrusion gears have a spring-loaded idler wheel opposing them. If you don't want to order from China, the OMG was quite hard for me to get here in Europe. I was very happy that the French store Imprimat 3D provided a sample that usually sells for a reasonable 59 euros. And even though it didn't outperform the other contestants, it was able to push 8.7 kilograms at normal speeds and 7 kilograms at the higher speeds until the filament stripped. One of the great things about this design is that the extrusion gears are accessible from the outside which allows easy cleaning. But which extruder is now the strongest? Both the Himera and the Dice Pro performed the best, with the Himera taking the throne in stock configuration. Overamped, the Dice extruder can push even more due to its spike gears and deserves credit for this design feature. This doesn't consider the overall weight of the extrusion system, which is crucial for speed printing. So if we take a look at the maximum extrusion force per weight, there is a new winner, the Orbital 2.0 followed by the Himera XS. Really interesting and confirms why the small Orbital has become so popular on current printers. Also kudos to E3D for taking a great spot in both of the categories. If they could only make the Obsidian widely available and talk about high flow nozzles, I could finally recommend the Himera plus Revo without any hesitation. In the end, you'll need to decide what's important for you. If you print with larger nozzle diameters at reasonable speeds, extruder weight might not be as important, so simply look at the extrusion force. Yet for the next record-breaking speed banshee, the force per weight winner might be the one to look out for. But what's your opinion on the results I've presented? Do they confirm your experience? And what other extruders should I have included? Leave a comment down below. If you want to grow your business, sell products online or just show off your creations, a professional website needs to be one of the most important things on your checklist 
and Squarespace, who sponsored this part of the video, is the perfect place to start. Squarespace is one of the easiest yet beautiful website development tools out there. Some of the world's biggest companies and even I use Squarespace to create a great looking website that is super easy to maintain and looks perfect on every device. Head over to squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen, select one of their beautiful templates suitable for every purpose and find out how easy creating your own website is. Once you're ready to launch, Squarespace offers you 10% off your first website and domain purchase if you use code CNC Kitchen at checkout. Squarespace has everything from a simple blog to email lists and member-only areas for special content like classes for your paying subscribers to powerful analytics tools. Generate revenue by selling physical products or even your digital files. Squarespace has got you covered and you can add all of that with just a couple of clicks in their amazing online editor. And if you're still getting stuck, they have 24-7 support and one of the best help centers that I have ever used. So get started and save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash cnckitchen and using the code cnckitchen when checking out. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye. <clears throat> because both times, because, because, 